The right testimony, but the wrong gospel? Hmm. Turn to Colossians chapter 2, verse 8. You ought to know this if you've uh, been saved for a while. This is a key scripture. It describes a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of people out there that when you examine their testimony, it sounds really good, it sounds legitimate, but then they start preaching a false gospel. And I don't mean another God or whatever else. Or you know, I'm, I'm talking about it's usually it'll go to an easy believism type of a thing. Um, no repentance, no you know, change life after salvation, no coming to the end of yourself and you know whatever it's just you know i got saved and they tell their testimony and there's a dramatic change and all the all the signs of them being a bible believing christian and yet now they're preaching some kind of a thing that you don't have to do the stuff that they went through if you know what i mean colossians chapter 2 verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of the world and not after christ um that's written to a saved Christian. Paul's not saying, beware lest any man spoil the lost people with philosophy. Uh, no, he's saying it to saved Christians. You can be spoiled by man's wisdom. Man's wisdom says, well, you know, how much, how much sin do you need to repent of? If you need to repent of sin, do you have to repent of everything that you have ever done? That's a sin. Jack Hiles said that. Um, if, if there's a changed life, how much does your life have to change before it's, a, you know, it's good enough to prove that it's a changed life and not just a changed life that's not changed life? Uh, does Romans chapter 10, verse 13 really mean when it says, call upon the name of the Lord, does it really mean call? Could it mean also believe from the heart and, and then all this other stuff? What are they doing? Trying to spoil you through philosophy. Um, when, you're, when you meet Christians, you need to talk to them about their testimony. Just don't believe every spirit, the Bible says. Try them, whether they are of God. Okay, uh, you, should, you should try these people. Uh, dead giveaways that you're dealing with a false convert is, I was saved as a very young child. You can't be saved as a young child, okay? When you're under the age of accountability, God's not going to judge you. Right? You have no understanding of that you've sinned against a holy, righteous God. So somebody that says, I got saved as a two-year-old, or I got saved as a, in Sunday school when I was raised Baptist and whatever, lost. Totally lost, okay? I once had that profession that I was saved as a child in Sunday school, and it was fake, all right? Totally, completely fake. And I came to that realization years later when the Lord truly did save me, uh, when I came to the end of myself. But uh, it's a dead giveaway. But you'll get somebody and they'll say, you know, no, I, I, I heard the gospel for the first time when I was in my 20s or whatever else. And, and, uh, and it just... You know, I couldn't think about it. I couldn't sleep, and I was worried about going to hell. And and I remember I, I just was crying, and and you know, and I cried, cried out to the Lord, please save me. You know, and and you and you hear that, and they'll say, and uh, he saved me. And I started witnessing to my family, and they turned against me, and my my friends left me, and I lost my job. And you know, those are the marks of true conversion. And uh, now you know, the Lord's called me into ministry and think, changed life. Came to the end of themselves, called to out to the Lord to be saved. And God changed their life. Okay, that sounds good. But then you hear them and they'll say, but you know, I don't think a man has to repent of all of his sins to be saved and, and whatever. And you know, they twist that whole thing too, the repent of all your sins deal. Talked about that in other studies. Um, of course, we don't teach it yet to remember every sin you've ever done and repent of each one or something. You don't want to do that. You have to repent of who you are as a sinner. Okay? Um, but they'll, they'll get into all this little philosophical stuff uh, and they'll get really mixed up. Why? Um, because they got spoiled by philosophy. I'll show you another one. Turn in your Bible to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Oh, uh, what's it say there in verse 1? Who hath bewitched you? Can saved people be bewitched? Yes, they can. Absolutely. And it's funny because there's a church that is a spiritual harlot, uh, Roman Catholicism. And that 
female there, she seduces and she's a fornicator and whatever else, she can bewitch a saved Christian. And all of a sudden, she can start to mess up, mess up a Christian doctrinally because they start to get away from the Lord and whatever else. And uh, you get around the wrong crowd and things. And, and well, I, I guess it's not a big deal if I... I got Catholic relatives, but, you know, we get along pretty good. And, and you start to fellowship with them. Mm -hmm. You start to get bewitched. Yeah. A Christian can be bewitched. You can be spoiled and you can be bewitched. And there's another one. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And I could do a, a whole bunch more probably, but, you know, I just wanted to do a real quick little study here. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 3 through 4. But I fear lest by any means as, he, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit, which ye have not received, or another gospel, which ye have not accepted, ye might well, might well bear with him. Excuse me. Um, yeah, again, beguiling. There's a lot of preachers out there that they put the music on just right and they, and they do their voices and, they, and they, they'll, they'll either speak in a really soft tone and they, you know, they really beguile you that way, they'll bewitch you that way, or they'll, they'll yell and they'll scream and do this evangelistic fervor type of stuff. They're beguiling you is what they're doing. And it's subtle. It's very subtle. So here's the point of this video. Believe not every spirit. You have to try the spirits. And how, what do you have to do? Somebody comes along and they say, hey, I'm a Christian. Hey, praise the Lord, I'm a Christian too. You know, you say, hey, I'm born again, I'm a Christian. Somebody says, oh, that's great, I am too. Okay, well, I need to hear your testimony. Or are you saying you don't believe me? I'd like to hear your testimony. And then look at that testimony. And you will see sometimes they have the right testimony, but they're believing the wrong gospel. Okay? Um, and they're doing some things that are wrong and bad and not you know, acceptable according to the scriptures. What do you do? Well, uh, if they're preaching the wrong gospel in terms of, you know, they're, they're saying that there's no repentance and, the, you know, they're, they're messing around with the thing and, and trying to go with the easy believism deal, but yet they have that right testimony. They say it, somebody, all they have to do is believe. There's no changed life, and yet they've had the changed life. They wouldn't be saved if they, you know, had done this thing here or whatever that they're now saying to do. Um... You know, my advice is to part company with somebody like that. There's a lot of people out there that I consider enemies to the ministry, but they have the right testimony. Uh, things did change for them. Uh, they did come to the end of themselves, I believe. Um, but then there's others that have this, you know, their testimony is that they got saved as a young child or whatever else. False testimony. Um, just as simple as that. So just wanted to put that out there because I know some of the brethren have been talking about this thing of when you hear somebody and they have the right testimony but they have the wrong gospel that they're preaching or some of the wrong other things. Um, you can have Christians spoiled, be, bewitched, and beguiled. That's all written to Christians. There's three things. Spoiled, bewitched, beguiled. Um, that's pretty serious. And uh, we also have to think about ourselves and say, you know what, I better be careful what I listen to. Um, I think it's okay to have commentaries, but quite frankly, uh, you don't really need them. Um, I have Ruckman's commentaries, just I bought them many years ago, and it's rare that I ever look at them, quite frankly. Uh, the Lord will reveal things to you if you're saved, if you're born again. And you start getting into commentaries, and you start to realize, especially with a guy like Peter Ruckman, he read a lot of books. And uh, that's dangerous. It's very dangerous. Because as a Christian, I mean, you can read books about anything, you know, how to build a, a wooden boat or how to fix your car or whatever. That stuff's fine, okay? You read historical books and learn about history and whatever. But when you start to read a lot of books on theology, you're going to pick up a lot of philosophy, a lot of man's wisdom, a lot of lost people writing about how to interpret this book. And some of that stuff can start to get into your head and you can get spoiled Especially if there's a Ph.D. behind your name. You know, um, you can really get mixed up. And so, uh, it, you know, again, I have to 
reinforce the thing of you need to have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Don't worry about all this stuff of, well, what's pastor so-and-so saying? What's, you know, if, just got to warn about that. So uh, please take heed to this. Um, make sure that you ask another professing Christian what is their testimony. And if that change life isn't there after they got saved, if there's no understanding that they're a sinner and they're grieved, they're vexed, and, and they get saved, they call out to the Lord to be saved, the Lord saves them, and all of a sudden people are turning against them and they're, everybody thinks that they're crazy. If that type of stuff isn't there, they're false. Get away from them. Um, if that stuff is there, but they're saying now their, their gospel stuff is messed up and they're, they're Trinitarian, they go to church, whatever else, well, they got spoiled by philosophy. And you would still do well to stay away from somebody like that because they can mess you up and start making you putting things into your mind. Right? So that's going to be it. Thank you for watching.